Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be doing another animation. Uh, this time we're going to be creating this animation uh, of uh, a virus destroying DNA like that. I think it's something that could be very useful if you're doing a sci-fi scene. Uh, so this one was something I got from Isidium. I get a lot of insp inspiration from there and uh, this one was made by Hakan Ozdemi. Uh, I think he used Cinema 4D and X particles. We're going to be using Blender and Geometry Nodes. So if you want to check out the project files, I'm going to be leaving the links in the description. You can get it on my Patreon page, Gumroad, and my YouTube channel page. Okay, let's jump in and uh, see how we started. At first, it was a bit tricky to figure out how they did the destruction there. But uh, yeah, the trick is very easy as I'm going to show you. So we're going to start with a plane here and set up a new Geometry Nodes. I want to create the DNA are from curves so we're going to create the structure of the dna and uh, that's going to be i'm going to use a line a curve line push it a bit to the left here so it should start at uh, negative 0.5 and here negative 0.5 yes so something like that and we want to mirror this on the x so i'm going to transform this transform this so if i look at this uh, if i move it on the x i think by one and join these two, we get uh, the two structures on the side of the DNA. I'm not sure how they're called. Now we can create those horizontal lines. And uh, to do that, we can instance a line, a horizontal line, a curve line, a curve line like that. I uh, want it to be on the X. So we don't want any Z position. We want it to be something like that. And uh, I want it to start from negative 0.5 and uh, end at uh, 0.5 like that. We want to instance it onto one of these lines. So I'm going to do an instance on points. And now the points are going to be this and uh, this line is going to be our instance. And if we preview this, we get something like that. Now, if we join this to the rest of the DNA, we get something like that. I think I might have to move these. Let me see. I should start at zero and have a length of one. Yeah, so like that. And uh, now this line has only two points. So to add more points uh, so that we have more uh, lines here, we can use a resample, a resample curve and uh, that way we can control uh, the number of lines. Now from there, we can have this around here. Yeah, so this resolution can be used by also this and uh, run throughout our geometry. To add the twist, what we're going to do is rotate our geometry on the z-axis and to do that we're going to grab our z-position we're going to grab our position and use our vector rotate connect that to our position now if i rotate this you see we're getting a rotation but not exactly what we want we want to rotate everything ar along the z-axis so for that what i'm going to do is just grab the position uh separate it uh, so that i get the z value and just push that in uh, that should get me something like that. Now I'm having, I'm running into an issue here because uh, I need to realize these instances uh, since they're not being realized, uh, they're not giving me the right rotation. So I'm going to do a realize instance here and I can see we're getting exactly what we want. We want some bit of separation and maybe even scale this up in the Z like that. And that to amplify our twist, what I can do is just add a math node. So if you just add that, it will just rotate this like this. So you might want that control, so I will add it there. And uh, But uh, if you want more twists, you just have to multiply this and uh, that should give you more twists. So, but uh, now we don't ha seem to have enough resolution there. So what I can do is uh, resample the curve here. And now you can see we have enough resolution. Let's bring this do something like that and maybe just scale this up a bit maybe bring up the count now if you look at uh, the structure here the top is not connected so what i can do is I, I can come here and just delete geometry now what i want to do is delete instance and i want to delete the first and last instance so i can just use uh domain size main size and just so so this gives us the number of instances so i can use the index index to compare the index of each instance so I can use a compare node here so where the index 
is equal to the count to the instance count I should be able to get rid of that point there so you can also do it to, to the last and that should also just be simple I can just add another delete node here and this time I just want to delete uh, the index that is equal to zero or the first index and uh, yeah you can see we don't have that anymore yeah we have our DNA structure I can expose some of these parameters like the count here so I can uh, expose that I can expose the twist uh, the rotation and uh, maybe the Z okay so with that now we can start working on how to destroy this and then we can add volume or thickness to it to make it an, into like a skin effect like that so to do that we're going to use a cloth simulation uh, so if i add a cloth simulation here uh, let me bring up my timeline if i play back nothing seems to happen and the reason for that is because uh, if we go back here we are outputting these as curves uh, and you can see from the spreadsheet here that uh, we have no values in the mesh category all of our data is within the curve category so that means that uh, we are outputting curves and uh, the the cloth modifier doesn't seem to work with curves so to do that we can come here and just convert this to mesh curve to mesh and uh, now you can see everything seems to work as expected uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the cloth and just remove all the gravity we have so that the cloth doesn't fall and then I will add some turbulence force up here so if I play back let me give this a you see what we have everything seems to tear like that which is okay so everything tears apart like that but I, I don't want the entire thing to tear apart uh, so let me actually also reduce the strength I want to have a fall off a fall off so this has a maximum distance so you see it breaks up like that and I can even animate this Let's keep the timeline to 180. I can start my animation up there and then come up to down here. So if we play back, you see, we are destroying everything as we go. But uh, if you look closely, yeah, you see that uh, we have very long lines. Uh, the problem we're having is that uh, each line is uh, destroyed as a single line uh, so our structure doesn't really break up organically so what i can do is come back to our geometry nodes i can use a split split edges and this will split edges according to my selection and what i want to do is split this according to a random selection so i'm going to use a random value with uh, with a boolean and that should give me a random value so if i do this we can see how this is going to split split up by using a scale elements and changing this to edges you can see how this is splitting up everything so those are very very those are too many pieces but let me show you what is going to happen you see how everything now breaks up really well and uh, that's what we're going for uh, i can reduce the possibility the probability so that we don't have as many pieces and now you can even change the seed now yeah that's what we want you don't need this scale uh, elements because it's just going to bring up uh, introduce gaps I just added that to show you what's happening so if you play back and you see that uh, there is a jump between one state to another like that so you want to go back to the cloth simulation and uh, under cache and change something about the cloth settings and uh, you see the cache will be will disappear so we can have something fresh yeah now from there we can add some skin to this so I'm going to just create another geometry nodes modifier new look at this now what I'm going to do is uh, since this is a mesh I want to first turn this into a curve mesh to curve and then curve to mesh so that I can give this some thickness so curve to mesh and circle and use a circle a curve circle Okay, you can see what we we have. Now this looks okay until you push it too much. You start to see uh, that in some areas we have these splits uh, because remember 
we have an edge split in here. But uh, the physics still works. But what I don't want is these rings here. They don't really look very well. So instead of using this technique, let's first reduce the scale of this to something thin like that. And then now what, what we're going to do to get rid of those hash lines, because they don't really look very organic. What I can do is use uh, mesh to volume so that we can turn these into a volume and then use volume to mesh. So we have something like that. Can reduce the bandwidth and uh, the voxel detail. Bring that up, set shade smooth. Now if we play back, you see we get that. But uh, if we play back, you see that uh, it, everything looks a bit jagged. It's, it's uh, flickering a lot uh, because of this mesh to volume thing. So what I can do is use a blur node that I want to smoothen these things out. So I'm going to use a position node, connect this, and I want to this to be a vector, connect this, and use a set position, and connect this to the position. So if I increase the iterations, you see how we start to smoothen things a bit. But if you go too much, you see it looks, yeah, it starts to, to look, to lose its structure a bit. So we want something like that. Now you see we don't have as much jumpy effect as we had before. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Now you can add a lot of things on through this. You can uh, add some noise. So with a set position, I can add some noise, connect the color to the offset, get something like that, and use a normal node. Multiply this with the noise, then connect that, scale this down a bit. Yeah, so there are tons of things you could do. Now we want to add some particle effect to this. So for that, what I did is uh, from here, uh, I think I had, you can just branch off here. I'm just going to branch off here, scale things up. So this is what we have. We can distribute points on faces and uh, we can use a cube or whatever geometry you want to use. I think a cube is enough. We want some simple particles and uh, we, we need to instance on points. Uh, these are going to be our points. Random rotation, random scale, scale. And, uh, let me scale these down here. And so everything still works. And uh, the particles only move where there is turbulence, so that's nice. So all we have to do is join these, these particles to the main thing. So join this. Now you can see our particles. Uh, I could add more particles. Let's do maybe 1,000. And we want random rotation, so instead of using this, I'm just going to uh, just create a random rotation using a vector. Okay. Okay, one thing I should do is uh, bake uh, my cloth. So I'm um, just my cloth simulation before I work on everything else so that uh, the simulation doesn't change while I'm working. This is where we are. We have our particles. So we only want the particles to be at uh, the level of the turbulence or where things are, are starting to move. So what I'm going to do is uh, create another object. We're going to use proximity. We're going to use proximity, mesh proximity to determine uh, the position of the turbulence. So I'm going to use this mesh. Let me add some subdivision surfaces, apply that and uh, change the display of this to wireframe so that uh, it's easier to see. I'm also going to parent this to the turbulence. So control P. Now when the turbulence ta moves, this also moves. So let's go back to the geometry nodes we're setting up, this here. Yeah, look at that. So I'm going to bring in, let me first pin this. I'm going to bring in this in here. Uh, make sure that I, I set this to relative. And I want to use mesh proximity. And uh, target is, can be faces. So this is what we have. Uh, but uh, to, to make this work, we need to realize these instances. So I'm going to use a realize instance. And uh, you can see what we have. So the we, we get a gradient 
of how close these particles are to this mesh. But uh, because the internal volume, or because this mesh doesn't have points inside itself, uh, that's why you see we get we go from white, black, and then white again. So to get rid of that, uh, I need to add more points in here uh, because I want everything above the gradient, above the turbulence to be dark. So I'm going to add a ramp, color ramp to control my contrast and I just make sure that uh, everything above this, and actually I can even scale this. Yeah, so that, uh, yeah, exactly what I want. The up ones uh, don't get, kind of go out of our frame. So you can either scale this up kind of proportional editing, push this up and scale it as we want. But uh, uh, the camera is likely not going to be seeing that far. So I don't really care that much. So now what we can do is just remove the points around here. Now we need to do a uh, delete geometry. And uh, all we want to do is use this. So you see, we get that. Now I can join uh, I don't want this original version to be there. So I want, yeah. That's and basically, that's how I set that up, how I set up the particle system and everything. In the original version, you see that I added quite a lot of other things. Uh, the particle system is just a simple particle system with uh, particles just going up and uh, but uh, this here, I added a few th extra things that uh, you might want to explore in the project files. For example, I added this turbulence to the particles. So if you, in case you want them to move up, to be animated moving up, there is that. I just push them a bit outside. And uh, the way you do this is just adding some, let's go back here, let me show you that. It's just to add some, is it called a, a set position to these particles? So if I use this, I can see, you can see I can push them up, but I, I don't want to push them all at once. I want to push them uh, depending on the their distance. So let me use a combined X like this. I want to push them according to the mask we have just created. So there are a ton of things you could do. And if you want to do that, I didn't want to make this video too long. You can uh, get the project file and explore that uh, if you want to look at other things. And another thing I did is animate some of these values. And this was the final project, uh, which again, you can download on Gumroad or my Patreon page, or if you're a YouTube member, I uh, should be there. Yeah, I think you can see the distraction. I also, one thing you will notice about mine is that uh, I also added that greenish uh, thing instead of just using a red color i just wanted it to seem like uh, this was being uh, like a decay effect uh, so that's uh, a material thing uh, maybe i could sh talk about the materials a bit because i didn't so if you go to the shader editor and just to explore that so this is uh, the material and uh, what I, what i did is i used the same gradient the same proximity gradient uh, that i created in the geometry nodes here. So this this gradient here, you just have to store it in a named value variable and uh, go to the material tab and just import it as an attribute. Uh, where is that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's this here. I call that attribute mask and I just use it here to, to blend between two materials. So I have this flesh skin like material with some subsurface and I also have this destroyed skin uh, material uh, that looks like that. So I just blend the two and uh, since the mask is unmated with the pros proximity I end up with this effect which I think looks quite nice and that's it. Yeah, by the way, if you're in the market for a crowd generation add-on, try out our procedure crowds. It's an amazing add-on and uh, I'm an affiliate. So if you get it using my affiliate link, it really helps out. It's, it's an amazing add-on for generating crowds uh, that uh, can be admitted, randomized, 
uh, with everything that you expect from a crowd. Or if you're str struggling with uh, UV mapping, make sure to check out Zen UV. Uh, that is a great tool for UV mapping and gives you a lot of control that you can't find in uh, the default blender. It just makes UV unwrapping quite an ease. Yeah, thank you for watching. All links are going to be in the description.